I can't believe how bad Element Skateboards is blowing it. <laughs> Chris Colburn 100% deserves to be pro, and he needs to be pro right now, but Element, what are you doing? Element has a reputation of taking people who clearly deserve to be pro and dragging them on for a while before they go pro, but obviously they know how to run a skateboard company a lot better than I do, and a lot better than anyone who probably has that same opinion that I have. They're very successful, but what is it about Chris Colburn that isn't allowing him to go pro, and what was it about Evan Smith that took so ridiculously long and Mattis apps? And then there's people like Grayson Fletcher, who go pro pretty much immediately. There's also pros like Tom Shar, who a lot of people out there don't even know is pro for element at the end of the day I think it has a lot to do with marketability someone like Tyson Peterson clearly just looks awesome and a lot of people stand behind him and his skill is undeniably good that's the thing about the ams on element they're all so good but to me there is a uniqueness to Chris Colburn skating and especially Yako I don't know how to say his last name. They're introducing, in my opinion, a very strong new way of skateboarding. It's unpredictable, and when you watch all of their parts, if you accumulate all the tricks that they do and all of the parts they've put out, I bet the amount of tricks that they do that they don't repeat are very close. As in, they pretty much always do a different trick. Now, eventually, Mattis Apps and Evan Smith went pro for the company, but Chris Colbert, in your time, it's, it should be here. It should have been there. It should be... He's actually been my favorite skateboarder since the barracks put this video out of showing him like at a coffee shop and working and then every party put out after that he put out this cut and dry part and I went to the premiere of that he actually sat behind me and I was like this is amazing kind of awkward because you're right behind me but you're you're clearly very talented and then everything he put out after that was like gold it was a gold nugget on YouTube to find this content from this human being who somehow just isn't going pro and I honestly think it has a lot to do with his look which sucks to say but I think it is the truth that a lot of kids might not see him and think that he is like a fashion icon which seems to work a lot better for people's careers in skateboarding, which makes sense because marketing rules all, I guess, unfortunately. I also don't want to sit here and pretend that I know what a company has to go through to turn someone pro, the amount of promotion and marketing and getting the boards, and I have no idea, and I'm sure it's a hellish nightmare. And obviously, I'm just another opinion in the crowd, but in my opinion, Element is blowing it so hard on this front. He should have been pro years ago. Oh, and this all stemmed from his new party put out on Thrasher that was almost 10 minutes long, and everyone thought it was like this B-roll raw footage edit, and it was a full 10 minute almost part for the Element video that wasn't in the Element video. And that's the thing, everybody loves him. The part did so well, it got so many views, all the comments are super positive. It's undeniable at this point. He also won Dude Tour, which I was luckily hired to go film and document his skating and I couldn't really stop filming him because now I'm just coming off as super creepy, but he is like my favorite skater, so. Anyways, let me know what you think. Do you think Chris Colburn should be pro? Is there a company that you think is better than Element that should put him pro instead? Kind of a controversial question, but also the reason I did this little talking bit for this video is because I will actually be doing series in the future of me just sort of going over something in skate culture, something in skating that I'm interested in and talking about it, which I've tried before, but I have a lot of, of new ideas coming out, which is kind of the wrap up of this video. Let me, yeah. You always just gotta pull the camera out. I'm oh, sorry, dude, I'm interested dude, in this content no, now. No, nobody cares. Steven, dude, what's the big news? We're pregnant. And you're leaving tomorrow. Well, yeah. But yeah. just for a little bit, because then we're going to be in California. That's right. That's right, baby. But I, um, wanted, I uh, wanted to ask what we're going to say. No, no, no it's all no, you. No, nah, man, it's no, all you. Ahead. Honestly, dude, 100% transparency. What was your experience like in New York? It was really good, because John uh, doesn't like to work that often. So <laughs> it was kind of like I just had a free trip to hang out in Manhattan and walk around. But uh, probably done like 16, 17 miles in the last like week of just walking. Just because I was like, ah, I don't really want to take my board around, kind of make, takes you away from the experience. At least when you're walking, you get, no, it was sick. That's awesome. This is the first time I've seen John in like two weeks, guys. It's been insane. <laughs> Has it actually been, or a week? <laughs> no, it's been like a couple days. <laughs> nice. No, I saw you. It might have been a week, dude, honestly. It might have been a while. Yes, Steven left, but I will be seeing him in California. This is the last day of January, and this month alone was probably more productive than most of my entire year last year. This year alone, I've created my own production team, including a filmer, editor, and illustrator. And don't worry, I'm still editing these videos. I just know that I'll need an editor for 
Just, there's so many videos coming out. I brought my filmer to New York City and he lived in my office. I started up my podcast again, The Progress Daily Show. I released the first issue of my magazine. I launched my second YouTube channel, Tropolis. I actually relaunched Progress Daily, where we raise money and donate the profits to the charity of the month. And in January, it was Gentle Barn, so thank you guys. And of course, I'll announce the charity of the month in the next video. We checked out the New York City farm colony where people have satanic sacrifices and like bury kids and stuff. Seriously, it's crazy. The goal was to do 50 collaborations in 2019 and we did 10 in January. I started supporting my grandmother. It's kind of a weird nugget to throw in there, but it feels good. It, it was kind of a dream of mine. I learned five bucket list tricks. I've uploaded 12 videos, including this one on my own YouTube channel and three on the Neutropolis channel, that's 15. I visited the diner from Seinfeld. My favorite shoe and trunk company both sent me free stuff. I've built two websites. I did all the typical New York bucket list things for tourists, like walk across the Brooklyn Bridge, splurge on designer, AKA streetwear, because I'm broke and I couldn't pull through with it. Went to the top of the Empire State Building, walked the High Line in Chelsea, turned Coney Island into my own private skate park, meandered through Central Park, saw a Broadway show, well, half of it. We actually left halfway through because we're impatient, but it was good what we saw. Visited the Strand Bookstore, I rode the Staten Island Ferry, visited the Statue of Liberty, kind of. I went all the way there which is an hour and a half, didn't go up to the statue, but I counted it because wow, it was stressful. And then I visited the Rockaway Beach where I randomly found a skate park on the side of it. I actually read four books. And earlier today I went to the Freedom Tunnel, which was terrifying. And I also went rock climbing, which I need to do more often because I'm very weak. But most importantly, I created what I wanted to on YouTube. I felt like I was basically a slave to my own creative outlet, which is YouTube sometimes. And a lot of creators feel this in any work that they do. Eventually when you start making money from it, you almost feel enslaved to your own creation. And this year, this month, so far, I feel like I have pulled myself out of that and it feels good. That was my biggest fear approaching 2019. That's the thing I struggle with the most actually as an individual, which is the biggest first world problem. But in reality, you pursue something. It's a passion of yours, it's a hobby, and then you make money from it and it feels like you've sort of figured out life. But then eventually, it's not happily ever after. There's something after, which is trying to maintain the occupation that you fought so hard to have and then realizing that maybe it's not what you wanna do for the rest of your life. And then weighing the options and exploring the options and opportunities that come your way from growing said product. January has been extremely productive and I plan on doing this every month, trying really hard to get as much as I can in a month. But February will be different. I'll be adding more to my channel and I'm excited for you guys to see that, but I'm gonna keep it hush hush until it is in existence. But February 11th should be a pretty significant change to my channel in a good way. It's all addition, no subtraction. But on that note, I'll see you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new video on this channel. Thank you for being here. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, all that you do to help the engagement of this channel and to help us grow as a community. And I try to get the name for the people out there who watch the videos. Now, obviously not necessary, but a lot of people out there said they like hillbillies. So for all the hillbillies out there, Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next time for another video. Love you so much. Progress daily and uh, keep killing it.